Um, my name is Tim. I'm here with Jethro, and I also have Yuval Shkedi on the line. He is one of our solutions architects here in the New York City office. Um, for the presentation today, this is meant to be a very introductory level type of conversation into Jethro data. So uh, as we get kicked off today, feels, please feel free to put any of your questions into the chat. We'll monitor those and try to get to them at the end as long as there's time. But with, uh, with that said, we will get things kicked off. So for the presentation today, we'll walk through some of the BI on big data trade-offs. Um, SQL on Hadoop, how Jethro separates from some of the other SQL engines, as well as the other options for trying to solve the BI on Hadoop problem. And then I have a live demo with Jethro and Tableau that we can show today, and we will dive in deeper to the technology and architecture of Jethro itself. So again, please feel free to log questions, and we will get to them as we can throughout the presentation. To start, Jethro is an acceleration layer for your BI tools. And what we can do is basically focus on the BI drill down analytical type of use case. So when it comes to reporting dashboards, discovery and ad hoc querying, Jethro is a great SQL engine. And the way that we do this is through indexing and caching. So you can think of Jethro as a combination of a columnar SQL DB and search indexing technology. If you'd like to try it, it's free on our website, so go ahead and download that. Uh, we're here to help with any questions you may have. And we do have major partnerships with all of the BI vendors, uh, or most of the BI vendors, as well as all of the Hadoop vendors on the market today. So when you first look at BI, when you're going to take your BI tool for the first time, people usually look to an extraction or in-memory type of solution. This works great. It's very fast. But the amount of time that people have to wait for fresh data and the limit in size that you can fit into memory becomes issues very quickly. So people tend to move to a live connection. And when you move to the live connection, this is where you start to see Hadoop doesn't necessarily work great directly with BI tools. So people in the past have tried to um, work with this or work through it by using large EDWs like Exadata and Natiza. And these are great, but they are pretty costly. So with the emergency emergence of Hadoop, there's people that are looking for that data like to store data at a much more cost effective way. Now, this is great, but you do pay for something and that comes in the form of performance. So Hadoop is great for your ETLs and predictive type of uh, analytics. But when it comes to the resource heavy BI drill down applications, that's where you're going to need some sort of acceleration tool. Now on the market, this is what we typically see within the clients we go and speak with. So first people will take Hadoop and they will try to add more hardware. This will get a little bit of a improvement in performance, but not enough to satisfy people used to in memory speeds. Then there's the SQL on Hadoop engines. Now, we're going to talk about this in more depth on the next two slides, but what I'll say here is all of these are the same. So they're all MPP or full scan. That's why we have them grouped together. And I'll talk about how Jethro differentiates itself from all of them in a moment. The next piece here that we see are people trying to go to OLAP cubes and pre-aggregations. Great way to get data aggregated for fast reports, but when it comes to discovery and true uh, data discovery, you're gonna lose a lot of granularity by building these OLAP cubes and aggregations. And they can also be timely to uh, continue to do the maintenance on. So then we see people moving to more of a non-Hadoop based environment, maybe taking their Hadoop data and ETLing it back into an EDW like Teradata or using some of the newer versions out there like Redshift and Snowflake. And then the last two here are the NoSQL solutions, some of the search combinations, as well as your full stack BI vendors like Good Data and Arcadia. So a lot of people trying to solve this issue. We do believe that Jethro is a great fit for the BI use case. So uh, let's talk about why. So we are a SQL engine by nature. And as you can see in the top left, we have a lot of the major or more popular tools on the market now listed. And like I said before, they're all the same. So they may have small variational differences between them, but at the end of the day, they are MPP or full scan architecture. 
So in the analogy we use, you can think of a library with billions of books and thousands of racks. When we query the database looking for the books by author Stephen King, it's going to take each one of the servers of Impala, Hive, or Spark SQL, whatever you're using, go out and look at its individual rack of data. Now it's going to go through every single piece of that data looking for the books by Stephen King. They're going to read a lot of unnecessary data and waste a lot of resources reading information that doesn't apply to the, to the query being run. So as you add more data to the data set, it's going to get slower and slower. Now with Jethro, we talked about how we store the data in a columnar format. So what we do is we take every single column in the data and we're going to put an index on it. Now what this allows us to do is only read necessary data when you query the database. So in our example here, you're going to look for books by author Stephen King. Jethro is going to know exactly where the, which row IDs to go fetch those Stephen King books from without reading the rest of the information. So it's going to use less resources and it's going to be much faster um, than having to go through the entire data set. When you look at the overall setup, you have your BI tool on top and Jethro is BI tool agnostic because we just need something that connects via ODB, ODBC or JDBC. So Tableau, Clicks, MicroStrategy, Power BI's of the world, Cognos, you know, we've got use cases with all these different BI tools. And when we get a, when we get a query, what we're going to do is use one of three different um, features to return that information. So we just spoke about the first one, the full indexing. Every single column in our columnar storage gets that index to help with the uh, processing of the queries. And then the other two portions that we use or features here are result caching and dynamic aggregations. And we'll get into those a little bit more uh, depth here in the next few slides. Now, the full indexing, the column files, the result cache, and the dynamic aggregations, all of this are stored back in Hadoop. So we're going to leverage the file system there for everything to store or to be stored on. I'll show you a quick demonstration of Jethro leveraging um, Tableau here. We have a data set of about a terabyte of raw data and the fact table is 2.9 billion rows. So let's fire this up. It's uh, TPCDS information and basically that's the typical open source uh, testing. So Oh, hold on one second here. I need to switch how I'm sharing my screen. Okay, so this is publicly available. It's password and username demo demo. So we'll sign in here and we'll get the Jethro one loaded. So this is a Jethro dashboard. And what we're going to bring up now, you can see, comes up pretty instantaneously. And we have just under those 2.9 billion rows uh, listed here in the top left. So I'm going to start drilling down into the information and pick a year, pick a category. And each one of these queries are going to take anywhere from about one second up to maybe five or six seconds. And each time that we add new filters, you can see in the top left corner that the amount of rows we're accessing decreases each time. So we went from about uh, 3 billion down to half of them, or 500 million. Now we're down to about 2 million. So that's the index is kicking in and you can see Jethro is very interactive with that. So let's go back to this presentation. And basically what we did is we charted out our overall experience with Impala Parquet versus Jethro. Now with Impala, you can see that it spikes as you start to add more filters. And this is because when you add a new filter, that's another uh, set of rows or columns that um, Impala needs to go and search each time you add more filters. So it's going to be slower and slower the more filters you add. Now with Jethro, it's important to describe the blue and red sides here. So the blue represents our cache. Now we talked about how Jethro has a cache for every query that's run. Now, this is meant for the very highly repeated queries, like your dashboard that everybody opens up the first time they get into your BI tool, or maybe those first few queries with one filter or two filters. So those are going to be responding in 
one second um, once they run once. And then on the back end side, when we get those unique queries with three, four, five filters, this is where the indexes come into play. So Jethro will start serving a very small batch of the information using those indexes and still get really good performance across the board. Now here's where we get a lot more technical and get into the architecture. So um, first thing first, we need to identify the BI worthy data sets. So when you use Jethro, you're going to create a Jethro format of the data. This is a uh, basically the index version. So you'll take whatever your BI worthy data set is, Typically, that's somewhere between 500 million rows to about 10 billion rows. We do have customers with much larger deployments, but that's usually the sweet spot. And now when we take that data set, we're going to run it through the Jethro loader and do that indexing. This process is really efficient. It's about a billion rows per hour that we can create indexes on. And once it's completed, it's going to be one third of the size of that original data. So about three times compression rate. Now with Jethro, we don't necessarily need Hadoop. We can use any file system to store the data. So local file systems, cloud deployments like S3 um, are all something that Jethro can work with. And finally, we support incremental refreshes. So you can add data to Jethro every minute, every hour, or every day. It depends on what you'd like to do. <clears throat> and each time you add more data, you're not going to have to fully re-index everything. What we'll, what we'll do is take that micro batch upload, index the new data, and merge it with your existing data set. So here's an example of how everything works. You'd have your storage system on the bottom of the screen here, so all of your data nodes, whatever it may be. And the Jethro data set will be spread across those nodes. Now, the Jethro query node sits on edge servers or edge nodes outside of your Hadoop environment or whatever environment you're using. And these are completely stateless. There's no information stored there. All of the data that Jethro is accessing is all on your storage system, HDFS or whatever you're using. And you can add extra Jethro servers to accommodate concurrency. So, when we get a query, in this example, it's sum of sale, where product equals books and state equals New York. Jethro is going to take this, and it's going to go access the indexes. It's going to return a list of row IDs back to the Jethro query node, and then it's going to go seek those row IDs out. So we're only going to read the relevant information for that where clause of product equals books and state equals New York. We're not reading any unnecessary data like a lot of the other tools out there. And we're going to return that information to the Jethro query node. This is where any aggregation is going to be done or any sum. And that will be returned to the BI user. Now, it's important to note that Jethro's performance is based on the working set size. So it doesn't matter if you have 500 million rows or 500 billion rows. If Jethro's query is only transferring 5 million rows of data, then that performance is going to be consistent with either total size of the data set. This goes into our indexes in a bit more detail. Now, we've said this a couple times, every single column is indexed. So you have your table, every column is going to get an index. You don't have to worry about planning or projecting queries. Um, and then on the right-hand side, I want to point out that we have a maintenance process that automatically happens in Jethro. So when you create those um, new micro batches to load and add to your existing Jethro data set, there will be duplicate indexes created. Jethro monitors this, and this is a transparent process to the end user. It's something that you won't even know is happening, and the performance will not be affected. So it will go out, it'll find and monitor those duplicate indexes, and on its own, merge them together to clean the system up. Now, the other half of the solution here are the aggregations and the caching. So every single query is going to be cached. You can control the size of this cache and how many queries get stored. And then on the other half, we have dynamic aggregations that are created. So Jethro will work to identify repeated queries and patterns that the users are creating, and then create small rollout cubes in order to help with performance here. This is all going to be stored back on HDFS or whatever file system you're using. You can have thousands of these. And the same thing with the 
uh, query caching, we can incrementally refresh, refresh this. So when you add more data, you're not going to have to lose your entire cache for all the queries and data that's already been uploaded. We'll have that stored already. And when a new query is ran on any of that fresh data, we'll run it once. And after it's run once, merge any new cache with our existing cache that's already there. So you don't have to worry about redoing that every time. The main thing to point out here is the aggregations are going to be very narrow in Jethro. So we'll create something that's small, you know, like the top example here. But if you look at the bottom, this looks like a really complicated aggregation. So we're not going to build those large cubes. Um, that's something that'll bog the system down. It'll take up a lot of storage. So we're not going to look to do that. And we also have the indexes to take care of performance when we have these cubes being created. So there's no reason to create something that large. It'll just going to be very narrow, simple cubes created as Jethro sees necessary. The overall architecture is this. We have the BI application on top, and that connects via ODBC or JDBC into the Jethro servers. These are the Jethro servers on their edge nodes, completely stateless, connecting into HDFS with the HDFS client. And on the bottom of the screen, you can see your data lake information on the left. And then on the right, whatever you've identified, typically between 500 million rows and 10 billion rows, as your BI data set will be indexed and stored on Hadoop as well. And then any of the cache that is created through using the actual uh, data set with the BI tool will be stored in Hadoop as well. So this is what it'll look like in a typical deployment. Now let's talk use cases. So there's three main ones that we split it up into. And the first one is just simply improving your performance of your BI tools. Um, once the data hits a certain threshold, somewhere between 200 million rows to 500 million rows, it's just not going to fit into memory and it's not going to be fast enough using your BI tool directly on Hadoop. So Jethro is a great option here. Our indexes will give great flexibility to the end user and you'll be able to query and discover the data how you like without any upfront planning. So this is a great way for people to address that issue. The next one here is the BI overload. So a lot of times you're competing for resources with Hadoop and whatever other tool you're trying to run BI with. Um, since Jethro sits on edge nodes or servers outside of the Hadoop cluster, you don't have to compete for those resources. We don't use Yarn at the moment. Um, it's just simply a process coming from a different server. So there's going to be no need to worry about that. So a lot of people that are testing enjoy separating those two computing processes. And then finally, the last one is a SaaS reporting environment. Jethro fits great into a multi-tenancy deployment. So a lot of analytical companies or analytics as a service usually find a few really great use cases where Jethro can help inside of their offering. To sum everything up, we have really the great product here for a BI drill down type of use case. So those reporting, dashboards, discovery, and ad hoc querying, general purpose, if you will. And what it comes down to is the full indexing. It allows for full discovery. You don't have to do a lot of upfront planning in order to allow this. And you're going to get faster results the deeper you go. It's also going to eliminate any unnecessary data from being read. So those MPPs will read your entire data set every time. This is not something that Jethro has to deal with and gets great performance because of it. With the caching and aggregations, Jethro is going to intelligently get faster and faster throughout its overall use. So this is great how it's going to learn or how it learns how your end users use the system. And then finally, we can ingest data at a near real-time rate. So it allows for pretty much live BI for the end users. They don't have to wait for those lag, uh, the lag time in order to get new extracts ready. And it's going to be very fast when they get the data, not having to wait long for those queries. If you are ready to try Jethro, head to our website. It is free to download. You can do it on-prem. You can do it in the cloud, whatever works for you. We are here to help, um, so definitely give us a call or shoot us an email. We can get one of our architects on the phone to talk about a POC, and that's free of charge for anyone who wants to do that. Um, and then it's really as simple as finding that 
data set to test, hooking your BI tool up and starting to train it with whatever queries you're going to run. So I appreciate uh, everybody joining today. And uh, what we'll do is send this out to everyone. And if there are any questions, feel free to get back to that email that you get the comp copy of this presentation from. And we look forward to hearing from everybody soon. Thanks again for your time.